Hello and welcome to another edition of Frightfully Forgotten Horror Movies. But before we get going, we are drinking the Resonator Pilsner. Today we're going to be talking about a Clint Eastwood movie. Yeah. It's the closest thing Clint Eastwood has ever done to a horror movie. It's kind of more of a suspense thriller with a lot of horror slasher aspects. It is 1984's Tightrope, directed by Richard Tuggle, who also wrote Escape from Alcatraz, also starring Clint Eastwood. The legend himself, Clint Eastwood, is in this. He was in so many good movies, of course, but one we gotta mention is the Iger Sanction. Way better than the good and the bad and the ugly. Oh, fuck. Miles. Genevieve Beold is in this, and she was the original Captain Janeway in uh, Star Trek Voyager before Kate Mulgrew took over. Yeah, I guess she backed out because the shooting schedule was too crazy. So she, yeah. was, she was like, ah, fuck it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, fuck like 18 hour days oh, and yeah, shit. Yeah, those, like, cool. those guys earned their pay. Yeah. Dan Hedaya is in this. And uh, he was in tons of shit. Uh, Blood Simple, Commando. <laughs> the log got a toy, but he didn't. <laughs> <laughs> the log is very important. <laughs> Tightrope starts off with this woman walking down the street at night. She's carrying a bunch of presents or something with her. Dark, foggy night. Someone's stalking her. Mm -hmm. and she starts to kind of pick up her pace a bit and realizes someone's stalking her. And you just see these sneakers. And she runs into this police officer. Camera pans down. You see the sneakers. Yeah. It's the guy disguised as a police officer. But then it just cuts. You don't see what happened. We get introduced to Clint Eastwood's character, Wes Block. Perfect name for a <laughs> detective, by the way. Block. A single dad stuck with his two girls, and he's a detective, and he's trying to juggle all this. On top of uh, bringing in another dog. Yeah, he uh, <laughs> finds a stray, brings a stray in, and you realize it's not the only one when he feeds it. All these other dogs yeah. come. It's like, okay, he's got a soft spot for dogs, and... Seems like a pretty decent man. Gets a phone call, ah, there's a murderer and he's gotta go. The woman in the beginning who was being chased was found dead. And she was strangled and like handcuffed and bound. There's a lot of evidence, but no fingerprints. The guy made coffee, mm -hmm. took his time to make coffee and enjoy himself. Well, he did whatever he did. And he ate a bunch of cookies. <laughs> yeah, he's having a good <laughs> he's time. He's a good time. So we find out that this woman was not only murdered, but raped too. And she was also a sex worker. So Clint Eastwood's character, Block, has to do some digging and he goes to the brothel that she worked at. Pretty high brow brothel. Yeah, this must cost a fortune. To talk to one of her co-workers and she's got it made, man. She's got like the fish tank. Yeah. Drinking all this brandy and everything. Yeah, and she, yeah. yeah she's pretty high class. He throws down her pitcher and he's like, I heard you guys work together. Is a sandwich? One on the top and the other on the bottom. <laughs> Such a sick line. <laughs> then she starts seducing him, right? And yep. taking off his tie and everything. <laughs> then she like goes down on him. Yeah, yeah. And she's like, what happened to the sandwich? Somebody ate it. <laughs> I can't what, what does that what mean? He yeah. ate it. <laughs> So Wes Block gets another phone call, and there's another victim. And uh, this woman is found in a hot tub, and it turns out that she's got a, uh, a little tattoo somewhere uh, on her behind. He takes that to the tattoo artist who did the work. While he's at the shop interrogating the guy, he's like, Oh yeah, I must have killed her then, and all this shit, right? He's all kind of putting himself in the way. And there's this woman sitting there with a popsicle, and she's getting all... She's all spread out. Yeah, and yeah, getting a tattoo and all this shit. <laughs> <laughs> she starts hitting on Wes Block. <laughs> yeah, the, the most attractive man in the, in the room. Yeah. So what are we going to do? Well, maybe I'll take you bowling. <laughs> talks a little bit with her about some of the murders going on because she's a sex worker too. So she knows some of these victims. These victims were handcuffed. Then he proceeds to put the handcuffs on her actually. And then it shows him they're all greasy and everything, <laughs> super sweating and shit. Greasy ass and everything. His ass, his old man ass. 
There's a doll that ends up getting delivered to the precinct where Wes Block works. It's got a note in it that directs Wes to another brothel. And of course, it's one that he's also frequented, right? <laughs> he <laughs> gets, knows everybody. Gets around. There's this like dominatrix woman that greets him like in the room. <laughs> She's got this whip. Yeah. And he starts talking, she all smacks him. <laughs> A bunch of times, yeah. he smacks the shit out of him. <laughs> Backhands him, then slaps him again. Like, holy shit. But he kind of likes it. Yeah. <laughs> like, this is kind of his thing. Yeah. This dominatrix woman ends up directing Wes to a gay bar. He meets this guy. I've been paid by somebody to meet up with you. And Wes is kind of like, nah, I'm not that interested. The guy's like, what? You never tried it before? Who's to say I didn't? <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of insinuating that maybe he's gone the other way, you know? Yeah. Figures that this is the killer who's hired the, the sex worker, right? To play games with him, basically. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So he goes across the street to the warehouse to try and find this guy, and he kind of starts sifting through all the parade floats of all these creepy clowns and... There's that... Ronald uh, Reagan? Yeah, like all this weird <laughs> shit. All of a sudden he runs into that gay sex worker who's hung. Wes Block ends up finding a, a new love interest. She's like the head coordinator for this rape prevention center. When Wes comes in and like watches a bit of the class, she's all got that three ninjas dummy thing. <laughs> she all kicks in the nuts and... <laughs> <laughs> they end up going on a date actually and they take Wes Block's kids to this sort of street carnival and the kids run up to this clown and it pans down and you see the shoes and it's the same shoes from the beginning of the movie right gives him those balloons that's where we're gonna end the story because uh, there's a lot more that happens with Wes Block with the kids with the killer so keep watching 1984's tightrope so as we mentioned Earlier, this movie is probably the closest Clint Eastwood's ever gotten to doing like a horror movie. Yeah. It's almost a horror movie. It's more, I guess, suspense thriller. Yeah, kind of a neo-noir slash, you know, partial slasher. Almost a slasher. Like, it could almost be a slasher. Yeah. It's, it's, it's this close. Also, the sleaziest fucking movie I've ever seen Clint Eastwood in. Like, yeah. His character is... A sleaze in this. He frequents all those brothels, and then you actually see, like, it's pretty crazy how you see Clint Eastwood getting a blowjob, like this yeah. woman going down on him and insinuating that. Yeah. It's crazy. And then when you see his bare, greasy ass, <laughs> and then yeah. one scene is like, whoa, I just saw Clint Eastwood greased up from head to toe <laughs> with his bare ass with this woman. Like, yeah, <laughs> it's crazy. It's it's totally out of character for Clint Eastwood, right? Yeah, to play that kind of role. Like, he's played badasses before, but never anyone that kind of, like... Dark and yeah. seedy yeah. and sleazy. Yeah. This movie really takes its time to build a lot of suspense, too. Like, even in that opening scene where that woman is walking, it takes its time. Like, this guy follows her for quite a while and she's always looking over her shoulder you're kind of gripping your chair yeah. already from the opening fucking scene of this movie you don't know where he's gonna hit next yeah but you know he's always watching everything he's always watching clint eastwood's character block like there's that scene where he goes to that brothel and he's wearing that weird kabuki mask and he's yeah. like peering from like up top like, yeah there's those the, cages through the cage and like what he's always watching so he's always got one up on yeah block so that amps the suspense because you know he's planning ahead yeah and you don't know why why is he chosen this guy to fuck with mm -hmm. you know why is he fucking with block there's a mystery there why why him the atmosphere in this movie is great like again right from the opening yeah scene like that opening scene really establishes everything yeah sets the tone for the whole movie dark and it's foggy all those nighttime shots are like that but then when it turns to daytime it's interesting it turns bland block during the daytime when he's being dad when he's being detective at the office, it's boring for him. Yeah. But then at nighttime, where he goes to hunt for a killer, 
and go have fun at the brothels and like have his nighttime fun, it gets kind of colorful. Neon lights, yeah. and it's more stylistic at nighttime because that's where he comes alive. And the settings for this movie are awesome. The brothels in this movie are awesome. All that neon lighting and shit. The warehouse scene. Oh, that's a great scene. Like, yeah, what it's a like, great setting. Chasing a killer through all these weird parade floats. Yeah. And there's that weird bar he goes to with all that the oil wrestling. Yeah. <laughs> all those girls wrestling in the oil. And then there's those weird, like, that midget yeah. referee. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he all has that cigar, too. <laughs> <laughs> like, it's like, what a... What a weird place, you know? Like, the settings are so bizarre mm -hmm. in this movie, but it, it works. The settings reflect the character. Yeah, because he has a lot of demons, yeah. right? And he's exercising those demons. He's taking them out. It's kind of funny because he enjoys his work because his work lets him go to these places to investigate. Yeah. But he's not really investigating. He's enjoying himself. Mm -hmm. Boy, does he ever shine like Clint Eastwood, you know? And it's so out of left field, like we had mentioned. He's got so much complexity. He's very layered. Yeah. Women issues, because he's, he's recently divorced, right? Taking out his anger on his wife, leaving him by visiting these brothels yeah. and like kind of like... Getting a little rough with them. Yeah, and kind of like, ah, yeah, fuck you. Mm -hmm. look, look what you did to me. It's almost like... He's doing this to get back at her. He's not getting back at her at all. He's just hurting himself. He's just hurting himself. So. so it's a really neat character that yeah. way. Where they tease you, right? They tease you at first. Oh, he's with his kids. He's taking in these dogs. He's a great man. But then he goes and handcuffs all these prostitutes. And gets and... all greasy yeah. and shit. <laughs> like, what the hell? The comedy is really sprinkled throughout the movie. And when it hits, it hits hard. Yeah. Like that whole conversation he's driving, Daddy, what's a hard on? And he's like, it's, it's when a, a man likes a girl. <laughs> Don't worry, Daddy. You can have a hard on anytime you want. Yeah, it's all embarrassing. There's also that scene too where he goes to that brothel and that woman has that vibrator and she's all using it on his chest and stuff. And then she all lowers it and you hear the motor all straining on his balls. <laughs> <laughs> or up his ass, one of the two. Either way, he's liking it. Yeah. <laughs> the heart of this movie, it's like a really good cat and mouse story between Block and the killer mm. because you realize that the killer is actually more after Block than he is after the women he's killing. Yeah, he's like using these women to yeah. get to Block. And it's like, oh, why? <clears throat> why is he after Block? What's the vendetta he has? You think that Block is tracking down the killer, but really it's the opposite. Killer is tracking down Block. They tease you a little bit in this movie where it could be Block maybe doing some of this stuff because every time Block goes to a brothel, the woman ends up dead. You don't see how she's killed. Yeah, you don't see how she's killed. You just see the aftermath of it. I really like the forensic side of this, which is interesting because this is way before shows like CSI where they get deep into the forensic part of catching a killer, right? Mm -hmm. Here, they go quite in depth into the forensic stuff. Wes really doesn't do a whole lot of like work. No, in this no, movie. it's all the forensics yeah, guys. The block is like just pissing around. <laughs> Fucking horror. Yeah, yeah. As wicked as Tightrope is, as a sort of neo noir horror slasher, there are things we would tweak about it to really ramp it up, right? Put it through the roof and yeah. make it a wicked horror movie. First thing that hit me was the music. Yeah. Like, the opening credits, it starts off this cool shot, Clint Eastwood, the text is like 80s style Terminator type <laughs> text. Yeah. But it's just like blues, jazzy music playing. And like, it doesn't suit the tone of the movie. I can see where they're going. It takes place in New Orleans. So they're going yeah. for that New Orleans style of music. So it suits the setting, but it doesn't suit the tone of the movie whatsoever. This movie really, in my opinion, needed a great 80s style synth score. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna do a comparison here. Original opening compared to a synth score opening. And I think the synth score opening 
will fit. Will fit better. Yeah, yeah. And here it goes. Also, it would have been cool to see the kills because you don't see any kills in this so it could have been a little gorier. You don't really know anything about the killer. They don't delve into the killer's mind like they do in, you know, slashers, no. yeah. right? They don't follow, they don't follow the killer. They show him a little bit and he's got yeah. those cool masks on all the time, like those kabuki masks and he's always got a different kind of look to him every time you see him. And if you would have seen the kills, yeah, this could have been a fucking slasher. Yeah, yeah, and a really damn good one too. Yeah. It's a damn good movie anyways. Kind of like Manhunter, right? Where Graham is trying to get in the mind mm -hmm. of the killer and you, you learn a lot about the killer, right? And this, it's kind of, the, he's secondary. Yeah, almost. it's a little more one-sided with Block, right? Yeah. I think it also would have been a little better too if they would have played up that mystery a little more. If it's Clint Eastwood doing the killing or not. I wish they right. would have uh, taken that more. They hinted. And ran with it. They hint at it, but they yeah. abandoned it pretty quick. Yeah. yeah. I wish they would have taken that all the way to the end. Yeah. That would have been just awesome. But those are minor, yeah. minor grievances. Besides that, the movie's pretty fucking solid. I think it's, I really enjoyed this movie. It's a great thriller. Mm -hmm. It's a great suspense neo-noir thriller. Yeah, yeah. That a lot of people have no clue even exists. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, fuck. Not, you never see Clint Eastwood in this type of role, really. Nope, this is, I think, the only time where he fucking, like, let loose completely. Yeah. Who knows, maybe he's got that dark side for real and he <laughs> wanted to... <laughs> Put it out Put there, it out right? there, yeah. You wanted to get greasy <laughs> with yeah. some bookers, man. Where's the grease? Come over here and show me where the grease is. Where's the grease? <laughs> <laughs> so let us know what you think in the comments, too, because uh, it's a very interesting, polarizing movie. And until next time, keep drinking.